Do you want to build a chatbot that actually knows what it's talking about? In this video, we're going to build a chatbot that uses Rack or Retrieval Augmented Generation to answer questions. Now, I watched a ton of videos about Rack and many of them pretend the topic is really difficult and some of them even take hours to explain it. And that's exactly why I made this video. Now, in this video, we're going to build a chatbot which uses Rack. And we're going to do that with Python, with Langchain, with Gradio and ChromaDB. Now before diving into the code, let's first take a look at what Rack actually is. So you see on the left side of my screen that we're first going to load something into the Rack. And that load can be a PDF file, but can also be a website, for example. In today's Rack, we're going to use a PDF file. And if you want, you can even use multiple PDF files. Then in the second phase, we're going to split this PDF file or any other document. And in this case, we're going to split it in chunks of 300 characters. And that's because at this moment, large language models still have a context window, which is quite limited. And of course, you also have to pay per token. So by splitting this PDF file, the rack can only fetch the chunks of the documents that are relevant for the question that is being asked. And then you see in the next step, embed. So for every chunk, we're going to calculate an embedding. And that's basically a mathematical representation of this chunk of text. And then in the last part, we're going to store every chunk as well as the embedding in a database. So the process that you've just seen is just the ingestion of the document into the database. You only have to do that once. And as soon as you've created the database, the chatbot can use it. So after the database has been created and the document has been ingested, we can actually use the database with our chatbot. So you see that as soon as a person asks a question to the chatbot, the first thing that the chatbot will do is it will navigate to the database and it will search for text that is similar to the question of the user. And it will do this by calculating an embedding on the uh, question of the user and comparing this embedding with the embedding of the chunks that have been uploaded to the database. And then in the next step, we're going to provide to the large language model, in this case, OpenAI, first of all, the chunks that are relevant to the question of the user, the actual question of the user, and we're going to provide a prompt that we're going to make ourselves. And because of this rag technique, the chatbot can actually answer the question of the user with information from the PDF document, and that's what we call retrieval augmented generation. Now, if you've watched more of my videos, then you probably already know my website. If you navigate to this page, you can find the link in the description. You can find here all the libraries that you need to install. So just click here on the copy paste icon, navigate to VS Code, open a terminal, and then paste the comment right here, press enter. And this way you can install all the necessary libraries. And then the second thing that you need to have in order to follow this video is an open AI API key. And if you don't know how to get this API key, there is another video on my channel that explains the entire process. Um, if you have created your OpenAI API key, you can just um, add it here to your .env file like this. And then we can use it in the two other files by using this library, the .env library. Now let's take a look at the code. So here we're going to import the necessary libraries. Um, this is required in order to load the .env file, this file. And then before I forget it, um, I have a PDF file. And I've stored it in the um, directory data. And any PDF file that you store here, you can as well uh, add multiple files in here, will be added to the uh, semantic database. And the PDF file that I'm using is this one, attention is all you need. So this is the introduction paper from the uh, transformer model. And you can as well find a link to this PDF file if you want to use the same um, PDF file on my website um, by clicking on this link right here. But of course, as I mentioned, you can use any PDF file. Then you see that I have a few lines for configuration. So the data is stored in the data pod. The ChromaDB is stored in the ChromaDB um, directory. This directory doesn't exist yet because the script is going to create it itself. And then this is where we actually uh, created the embeddings model. So the model that's going to calculate the embeddings. And then as you can see, this is where I create the vector store. So this is actually the semantic database where we will add all the chunks of, uh, of the file. Um, I'm creating a collection, which is now called example collection. Of course, you can give it any name if you change it. Also, don't forget to change it in the chatbot.py file. Um, so this is where we use the embeddings model in order to calculate the embeddings. Then you see here loader is PDF um, uh, directory loader. So this is where we actually load the PDF file. Of course, if you want to um, create a rack based on a website, for example, you're going to use another loader and you're going to use be probably beautiful soup and these kind of libraries. So we load the raw documents and this is where we split them. And um, in this uh, example, I've um, chosen for a chunk size of 300 characters and an overlap of 100 characters. But if you have documents that require way more or maybe even less context, then you can change this to maybe 500 or 200. 
Um, you can just experiment with it. And this is where we then have at the end the chunks. So we just have a list of all the chunks um, uh, containing uh, all the different parts of this document. So UUIDs, this is a library that I use to create uh, unique IDs. It's imported right here. And basically um, with the unique um, identifier of every chunk, you can basically delete or you can edit chunks. In this tutorial, I'm not going to do that, but it's uh, theoretically possible. And then at the end, you will see that we add um, the documents to the vector store. And we add the uh, chunks here and unique IDs. And this is the entire script to add PDF files to our uh, vector database. As soon as you've run the script, you can basically delete it uh, because you only have to run it once unless you want to add multiple files. So I'm going to run it. And as soon as it runs successfully, you will see that the Chroma DB folder has, has been created here, Chroma DB. And this means that you can basically delete the ingest database file. Then let's um, go over to chatbot. You'll see that we import some um, libraries here. We also use uh, load.env to import the uh, API key from the .env file. We use the same directories and we use the same embeddings model. And in this uh, file, we're also gonna use a large language model which is, um, it, in this case, I use GPT-40 Mini, but of course you can change this to any other model and you can as well change the temperature here. And then we uh, initiate again the vector store and this is exactly the same vector store as where we have stored all the data uh, in the other file. As I mentioned, if you want to change the name of the collection, you can do that. Just make sure you do it in both files. And then this is important because here uh, we basically mentioned that we want to get five results. Um, a max from the vector store. And of course you can also change this to one result or maybe 10 results. Just be aware that in case you uh, increase the number of results, it's also very possible that you um, reach the limit of the context window of uh, JGPT. So make sure that this number is as low as possible, but you still fetch the correct information. So in order to do that, you have to do some testing. And especially if you want to have very long conversations with uh, the chatbot, you have to make sure that this number is not too big. Okay, then you will see uh, at the bottom here that um, we initiate our Gradio chatbot with, with Gradio library. Uh, of course, you can change all of this, uh, but what is important here is that here we refer to the function stream response, and that's exactly this function. So every time uh, someone types something in the chatbot and presses enter, this function will be triggered. You can, if you want, you can, um, you can uh, make it visible here what, what happens. And then you see here that we uh, create a variable called docs, which is equal to re retriever.invoke message. And message is, of course, the message. So here we get all the knowledge from the database um, that is similar to the question of the user. And then here we create knowledge. And then we loop through all the chunks that we have received. So this can be up to five chunks that we receive. In this example, of course, you can change it. And then um, this is where we make the actual prompt. Now Langchain has other methods to create a rack prompt, but I just wanted to do it like this in order to make it as visible as possible. So here we just tell um, the uh, JGPT model that it should not use its um, uh, internal knowledge. Um, we provide the question, which is coming from message. Then we provide the conversation history. So Gradio also keeps track of the history, like basically everything that you've already asked before. So it is aware of the entire context of the conversation. And then here you see the knowledge, and this is the knowledge that is of course coming from, um, from here. And here you will see that it starts streaming back to the chatbot, and I'm gonna show you what that looks like. And as you can see, in this case, we get a private link. I'm just gonna copy this link and uh, paste it in my browser. But what you also see here is that you can set share as true, like this, and this will provide you a URL that you can also share with your family and friends. And let's go uh, to the browser and let's see what our chatbot actually looks like. So this is our chatbot and here I can just say hi. You will see that it keeps track of conversations because I can just ask, what did I just say? It was a bit slower because it also used the rag, but of course the rag is not gonna provide any meaningful answer. But you see here, you asked, what did I just say? So it is aware of the entire conversation that I have with the chatbot. Now let's try something to see whether a rack works. So I'm gonna search here for the concept of self-attention. And this is explained in this paragraph right here. And I'm just gonna ask what it is. And as you can see, it's giving us back uh, an answer which is very similar to the answer of the PDF file. And that's because we are using the rack technique. 